Are you worried about gaining weight during the festive season? Do you agonise over to whether accept that cocktail party invite, that work's due date, that night out with the girls, in case you end up with five pounds of extra blubber around your tongue? Well, I was. I am that girl and I have five tips and tricks that help me to go to the ball or party or works outing and I'm here to share them with you. So sit back, kick off your heels, pour yourself a martini, maybe not actually quite yet, and pay close attention to these golden nuggets. So the first tip is delay your first meal of the day. Now this tip is related to time-restricted eating, which is a whole other subject for another time. But in essence, it's about condensing your eating period from say 15 to 16 hours to eight to 12 hours. Now, given that you're likely to be starting the party at around 6.30ish, say, especially if it's a cocktail party, and you'll probably be carrying on eating at least until 10 p.m., the best thing to do on a day like that is not to eat breakfast till about 10.30 or 11, if you can bear it. Now, I know that might seem odd, but trust me, it really does work. In fact, it's what I practice virtually every day. Now, I don't deny myself all food. I do actually have a coffee with some milk in it. Not a latte, not a huge grande from Starbucks or anything like that, but a decent coffee that's quite strong, as I like it anyway, with some milk. So I'm not going completely hungry. And I have to admit, I also have a chewing gum or two, but we'll come to that a bit later. Then I'll have lunch probably around, I don't know, 1.30 or 2. And I try to stick to some vegetable soup. And then I'm done by 2. And then at half 6 or 6 o'clock, I depart for the event. That way I can enjoy what's on offer without feeling guilty. Not that you should, of course, but that's a whole other story. But also knowing that I'll be able to do up my zip or my nice smart outfit and won't feel uncomfortable during the evening. I'll also continue this regime the following day. I probably won't have breakfast at all. And I might just go straight for lunch at one o'clock, just having had a coffee until then. And I'll be doing this for all the events I'm attending or all the dinner invites that I'm going along to over the Christmas and New Year period. Now, the next tip is to eat before you go, which I know is the complete opposite of what I've just suggested to you in tip one. Now, this only works if you are going to a stand up drinks party or a party party. You know the kind where there's finger food or canapes on a charcoal board, which can still be delicious, filling and calorie laden. Even soup and veg or soup with some bread, you're probably feeling fairly full and probably won't be tempted by what's on offer. Also, you are less likely to get tipsy because you've lined your stomach and you're less likely to feel the effects of your lychee martini or your G&T. Now, I'd only caveat that by saying don't eat pasta or baked beans. Pasta because you might struggle to do up your beautiful new outfit and baked beans because, well, you know why. Now the next tip is, and I know some of you might find this unpleasant, is to chew gum. Now I know it might sound horrible, impolite, a bit yucky even, but honestly, if you find it difficult to refuse nibbles, it really works wonders. Now I don't suggest you spend the whole time chewing, but if you pop it in your cheek before you go and leave it there, you'll find it very difficult to eat anything. Now you can still drink wine, but just be careful not to swallow the chewing gum. Although it's not dangerous, contrary to old wives' tales, but the great thing is that it should stop you from nibbling what's on offer. Now, I'm not suggesting that you do this at a dinner party or a restaurant, particularly at a dinner party where the host will have gone to great trouble to cook for you, but I do think it works a treat if you are truly worried about overeating at a party. The fourth tip is be curious. Parties, especially work dues, can be quite intimidating. I've often found them so, and I've resorted to hanging around the food table on my own, plate piled high with goodies, too scared to start a conversation with a stranger and ending up eating far too much. If, on the other hand, you take the bull by the horns and decide you're going to seek out interesting people to talk to, you'll find that your need to gobble up all that's on offer will subside because you're too busy finding out what a VP actually does or discussing the merits or otherwise of electric cars. So find someone or a group of someones who you like the look of, make a beeline for them and try an opening gambit like, 
I just had to come over and ask you where you got your shoes. It will keep you occupied and out of harm's, or rather nibbles, way. The fifth and final tip I've got to avoid putting on weight over the festive season is to relish every mouthful. And by that I mean, if you have chosen something off the canapé plate, or your host has put the most delicious dish down in front of you, and you pick up your fork to eat it, don't gobble it up. Take time to savour it. Feel the warmth or the coolness in your mouth. Swirl it around, then chew slowly. A little bit of history here. My granny used to encourage me to do this by telling me that Gladstone, who was one of the prime ministers during Queen Victoria's reign, used to say that one should chew one's food 50 times. Now, 50 times is a little bit excessive. Well, very. But there is some truth in what Gladstone was suggesting. Because if you chew for longer, your body has time to register what it's just taken on board, so to speak and you're likely to feel full more quickly than if you just walked it down. So there you have it. Those are my five tips to stop you piling on the pans during the festive season. So what do you think? Will you try any of these tips? Have you tried any of them? Or do you have any tips that you'd like to share with us that have helped you to keep your weight down during the holiday season? Do let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd be so grateful if you'd take a moment to do it and hit the notification bell so that YouTube lets you know each time I upload a video. And bonus, I have a monthly newsletter which you can subscribe to in the info box below. In that, I share my monthly faves and nuggets of info for us over 60 girls. And thank you so much for watching. It means the absolute world. It really does. And keep safe and well. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye.